All right, hello fellow YouTubers. I'm up early and today, so it's still dark outside and I have a cat running around here, um, but I wanted to make a video uh, and today's topic of discussion is the Google um, internal memo that um, has been circulating in the news and has been made, um, circulating uh, social media. And there are a couple points that I wanted to make with it uh, because I read it and I didn't see the an anti-diversity speech as um, some people have tried to spin it. Um, in fact, I, I think that the speech was saying, you know, let, let's look at our uh, our anti diversity um, approaches and see if we're not misallocating resources. Um, it, it didn't even claim that there wasn't sexism in STEM because there probably is um, sexism in STEM, uh, and but it's not always on the part of it, let's say hiring managers or employees. Um, some people have argued, oh, well, maybe there's sexism at the earlier stages of the cognitive development uh, in kindergarten. And that's a worthy question worth asking. And you would never know if you just assumed it must be sexism um, at, one, at one end. So I thought it was a decent article that was well written. When I read it, I just basically said, oh, this is evolutionary psychology. In fact, that's what he draws on. He, he draws on the big five personality types. And I think that's another problem is like, if I were to read that and not know, um, it was an internal memo. So it was meant for people who probably have heard of, uh, or, you know, they work for Google. So they look up the big five personality types. Um, but I saw that news outlet sort of glossed over that and um, mischaracterized his work. And it's not the general public's uh, duty to go research what what are the big five personality types and um, is does that word mean what it sounds like it means um, in the in the context of uh, psychology um, it's it's really the journalist's uh, job to do that and I think that most journalists have failed to do that um, I also read online that they took all of his charts and uh, links uh, to academic journal uh, journal articles out of the piece and that's problematic because the idea that he's just promoting sexist uh, stereotypes. Well, m most of what he's said are, comes from direct quotes from well, uh, well-reviewed, uh, you know, peer-reviewed academic uh, journal um, citations. So he's basically quoted, and I'll read some of the quotes. And I want to read some of my comments, but there's uh, a bit of a silver lining because I, I do think this is getting a lot of attention. And I think mostly some of the comments that I've seen from other people have been good. And I actually commented on NBC LA's post and it was one of the top comments it got I think 23 likes um, and mostly positive feedback uh, with exception uh, of one person who um, threw out some uh, not so uh, or no two people who threw out some not so uh, productive comments but with exception to those two people I had a good discussion that that went about 16 comments and um, for general population that you, that usually almost never happens. Uh, and so for anybody who participates in YouTube comments, you know that. Okay, so I'm just going to read some of the comments that I made as well as other people. Uh, I'm not going to give the names of the other people, but I'll, I'll share what I what I did. And then I'll um, also show you some uh, popular quotes from some uh, academics so that you can see um, some of the, and public figures so you can see some of their thoughts on the Google memo. Okay, um, and then I just want to add, again, you know, to say to say that this is um, sexist uh, is to call the entire field of evolutionary psychology sexist. Well, basically, um, not the entire field. I mean, so it's it's fine to study, uh, you know, dimorphic sex differences in um, chimpanzees. It's fine to study um, dimorphic sex differences um, in uh, in salamanders. But how dare you uh, look into any form of evolution? Evolution didn't occur for humans. So, you know, it, this is basically um, the last denial of evolution. And it's worse, I think, in some cases than some of the de some of the denial um, of evolution on the far right, because the left actually is or should be informed on this topic. Uh, but, you know, there's plenty of evolution denial. like 40, I think like 40 percent of Democrats don't believe in evolution. So uh, plenty of evolution denial going all the way around. Um, again, again, I don't think, just to kind of highlight a point, um, well, I, I said it in my comments, but it, he's never saying that men are more talented uh, in the piece. You'll never, you, you can do a control F search. You can, why well, I, I recommend reading the piece in full. Um, you'll never find a spot where he says men are more talented or that women should not work in STEM. Uh, but he's talking about the extreme ends of people too, when it comes to traits. And 
um, certain traits uh, are needed. Most men cannot work in tech jobs, right? Uh, most m only something like the 90th, you're, you're probably find the 90th percentile of people in terms of uh, things like IQ, um, conscientiousness, etc. those sorts of things uh, who can uh, do the work and would be willing to do the work and find the work enjoyable. Okay, yeah, so so finding those, so, so these sorts of things are very different from saying women should not be in STEM. And um, he also makes a, a, a good, well, I'll, let me just read them and then you'll, you'll see what I'm saying. And um, some of them are on my computer, so um, I'll cut these areas out. Some of them are on my phone. Okay, so my first comment was, this was on NBCLA. So um, I said, NBCLA completely mischaracterized what the Google art article's author said. He didn't say men were better. He said on average that men and women are different biologically and have different interests. I would recommend checking out Steven Pinker, Harvard pr uh, professor's lecture on gender differences before reacting angrily. And I linked to uh, Steven Pinker's talk called uh, The Truth Cannot Be Sexist, you know, basically um, that both biology and, uh, so uh, and society and sociality uh, influence the gen the two genders that they're um, intermixed. Uh, I like Yad's dad's cake metaphor. You can't always easily uh, just you know you can't only always e e easily uh, point out where the sugar, the flour, um, etc. Uh, the individual parts of the cake mix um, are, but you know that they're there. Uh, okay, so then there were um, various replies, and somebody immediately straw man that said are you saying women shouldn't work in stem because you know and then a person who um kind of believes in the it's a very popular uh, theory the blank slate and actually steven pinker's written about this i highly recommend the book i've read parts of the book and uh this has convinced me that i need to read it in full and give it a thorough reading because um it's been you know 15 or 16 years but uh people are still having uh, trouble with these concepts and still arguing and uh, resisting the idea that there might be some innate sex differences uh, on average, and the key phrase is uh, on average. So um, I replied to her, which she had some good points. Uh, I said, I agree with you that women can be interested in tech, and many are, but on average, and on average is the key phrase, um, you know, that doesn't always seem to be the case. There's plenty of evidence documenting this, and one is that more egalitarian countries, and the author of the Google memo cited this uh, same research, uh, shows that sex differences widen um, in more egalitarian countries, uh, not shrink, because it allows people to follow their passions. In other words, the dream job of a talented woman may be, on average, and the key word being on average, different from the dream job of a talented man. That is very different from saying that one gender is more talented, and it's got, got quite, a, quite a lot of likes as well. Okay, so some people, uh, another person commented and said it was similar to um, just racism, like maybe there are differences, but um, you know, cisgendered white males are solely responsible for um, evolution drawing going back um, 200, 300,000 years or 200,000 years <laughs> ago since we've left Africa, those sorts of things, um, which, you know, I, I shouldn't laugh because you, we should study these things and we should learn. And I'm not an evolutionary psychologist. And even if I were an evolutionary psychologist, uh, I wouldn't be an authority over uh, the processes of evolution, and there's plenty of room, uh, plenty of ignorance on my side, and plenty of room to learn more and uh, and study more. So, uh, so I just, you know, I didn't argue against that. I, I just said, you know, even uh, I told the guy, even if I granted that you uh, everything you said were true, how do we solve the difference? You know, we can't force women um, to work in fields they don't enjoy. But some evidence is showing that we are moving in the right direction. Um, and so I cited the, uh, Cor the Cornell study, and I linked to it in my other video, showing that uh, women for faculty field, uh, fields, uh, for faculty, faculty, sorry, women for faculty positions in STEM uh, were actually favored, favored two to one. So, you know, if you're calling hiring managers uh, who are favoring women sexist, uh, we've got it exactly wrong. And uh, spending and allocating resources on diversity training for these people um, is absolutely an opportunity cost. Okay, so I said, I'm not saying, uh, so we shouldn't we shouldn't force people into a job they dislike, um, but no one said anything about banning people or that people shouldn't be allowed in this field either. The author doesn't say that. Um, so, you know, people, so I said, yes, people should uh, pursue the career of their passions, but simply say that there is rampant sexism if you don't have 50-50 representation um, in every field. 
Um, and so this, you know, is it, should there be 50-50 representation for um, people who um, cut down trees? So for loggers, should there be 50-50 representation for um, masonry work? Should there be 50-50 representation um, in dental hygienists? Um, and so these are all uh, fields that have one, you know, drastic leaning. Um, you know, even in academia, 57% of my college is, uh, are, you know, is, is uh, female, um, and 40, what was that, like 43% um, is male, with uh, somewhere a little over 0%, uh, between 0 and 1%, um, un undisclosed. Um, so, you know, uh, so we can't just, to simply say it must be sexism is to oversimplify the, um, the problem and it's to assume a cause without really knowing um, the cause. So it's, you know, it's uh, correlation without causation sort of sort of stuff. So you can't just look at disparate outcomes. And many of us know this, right? We, uh, we learn this from all of our science classes. You can't just look at the outcome and assume you know why it happened. Um, so that, you know, would be a post hoc theory. OK, um, let's see. Then I think and actually one of my better comments was the last comment. I, you know, could have posted a longer comment. I have a feeling, though, if I had posted this, uh, more thorough comment at the top, uh, my comment would have not made it, uh, not not had been as popular as it was because uh, many people liked it and seemed to think it was a good comment. Um, I said, if the M, so because some people were surprised by my position and uh, rightly so because NBCLA should be, uh, should be trying to fact check. They should be uh, speaking honestly about what people actually said. Um, they shouldn't be trying to distort it or obfuscate it in any way. So I said, if he had claimed what NBCLA says he had, um, you know, that men are biologically better fit to work in the tech industry um, and be leaders in the workplace, um, I would find his views to be just as backwards as you find them. But he didn't. There's not one single direct quote to his original article in the piece for one. And so, you know, I would challenge somebody, look for the part where he's uh, saying women should not be in tech or that women are less talented or uh, not fit for tech jobs, you, you, you can't find it. You'd have to really try to obfuscate what he did say. Um, so the author references the big five personality traits and argues that women on average differ from men biologically, which is well documented by thousands of studies. See my post of Harvard professor Steven Pinker's lecture above for some examples. He then suggests that there's good reason that the pursuit of different interests, not necessarily always sexism, might account for the fact that there is not perfect 50-50 representation in all fields, specifically here in tech at Google. He's not arguing that women are less talented um, or that they should not work in tech. Um, so below is a direct quote, since NBCLA didn't provide any in the article. So I'll read the quote and uh, I'll probably even put it up on the screen. He, he quotes, quotes this, he cites a, a, an academic study uh, and I'll link to the academic art article too. So you have uh, all of my links, uh, the Cornell study, uh, Steven Pinker's lecture, which you should definitely check out because he explains um, the the sex, you know, he explains uh, the differences amongst the sexes in a way um, that I think is not controversial. And he shows, you know, like we should not, um, we should not hinge equal rights on the idea that we're all um, biologically indistinguishable. Obviously, I'm shorter than the average male, so uh, I don't think that I should have less rights than other people. Um, some people uh, have curly hair, like I do. Some people have straight hair. We don't have to be indistinguishable to have equal rights. Then it's really a silly notion, anyways. Okay, so he says, note that contrary to what a social constructivist would argue. Research suggests that greater national level of gender uh, equality uh, leads to psychological dissimilarity in men and women's uh, personality traits because as society becomes more prosperous and more egalitarian, innate dispositional differences between men and women have more space to develop and the gap that exists between men and women in their personalities becomes wider. We need to stop assuming that gender gaps imply sexism. And so basically, as things become more equal, right, as things move in the direction that we want, right? Because we don't want sexism. You're actually going to see more gaps, more. Um, so, and so I guess where a lot of people might disagree is, well, there is still some sexism, right? So the gap hasn't been perfectly closed. I don't think we're in that route where we've gone too far, but uh, there could be some reasons why we still see gaps that have nothing to do with sexism. Um, okay. So, and then I cite the academic journal that he's referencing, and then I cite the full piece. Uh, I really liked what a colleague of mine posted last night. It was right before I went to bed, uh, but he disagreed with the author, uh, you know, and I don't disagree as much because I, I thought it was pretty well documented um, and pretty on par with what I've read in evolutionary psychology. He said, so 
while he may be wrong, or sorry, so while he might be wrong, he was uh, arguing in good faith, and his dismissal does seem to confirm his fear that dissent can be dangerous, which he was fired uh, for his views, right? So uh, he was right on when he was arguing that we're in an echo chamber. Uh, thanks for posting the study suggesting true gender differences, always speaking statistically, of course, uh, become more noticeable the more egalitarian a society is. That That's interesting, I think. So uh, so that was a, a friend and colleague of mine on my Facebook. And, you know, I thought that that was the right reaction. If you don't agree, um, you should be skeptical. And, you know, he's probably wrong. Um, you know, like most scientists are in scientific studies are probably wrong somewhere. Uh, I, but yeah, it, he seemed to be in good faith and probably shouldn't have been fired. Uh, okay, is, is that, oh no, I have one more. Okay, so I wanted to read what Jordan um, B. Peterson had r written on the topic. Um, that's my cat again. Yeah, I'm taking forever. So this is what happens when you're not organized. Uh, so there were two people, uh, okay, so he was responding. So uh, it was um, Dr. Deborah W. So um, I hope I said her name right. I just recently followed her. She said the author was emboldened by positive responses he got because he's speaking scientific truths, hashtag Google memo. Um, and she writes, um, she's a columnist who writes about sex differences and um, some of her work seems really cool. So I'm gonna check, check, check out some of her work. She's also gonna talk about technology and how, um, technology might, uh, you know, interact with gender. Um, so that seems right up my alley. Um, and then Jordan B. Peterson, professor uh, at the University of Toronto, and he's also taught at Harvard like Steven Pinker as well. Um, and his quote unquote screed to use Gizmodo's terminology was dead on accurate scientifically. And Jordan B. Peterson has entire an entire series on the big five personality traits. He's done quite a lot of work uh, in this field. And, uh, and so he knows the literature well. Uh, to, so for Jordan B. Peterson, who uh, who is very well versed in the literature on this topic, to say that it's dead on scientifically, um, I can't take that lightly, and I don't think that most people should take that lightly, um, especially if we're not um, if we're not as versed in the literature. And, and so I'm I'm certainly not because I'm not an evolutionary psychologist. My my master's was in um, rhetoric and composition, uh, so. Uh, I somewhat have to defer to the actual scientists in this area on this issue. And the science to me seems to be overwhelmingly um, congruent with what the uh, Google author claimed. Uh, uh, but that said, again, certainly there are obvious examples uh, of sexism, racism. You know, I don't think we have to make them up to um, combat those obvious examples. I think we should attack the, uh, the low-hanging fruit. Uh, but this case, uh, this doesn't seem uh, like one of those cases. This seems like somebody who is arguing in good faith and is really just, and it's, it makes me nervous because um, what if somebody has a PhD or a, a master's in evolutionary psychology? Uh, are they going to be fired from their jobs if they um, discuss publicly um, that there might be some differences? And that's, again, that's not to say anybody's less talented. It's just to say some people pursue their passions and their passions are different. Uh, so, you know, uh, some of my most talented students uh, who are women, they could be physicists and, uh, you know, but you might have to ask them, okay, well, but what is your dream job? What would make you most happy? Allowing people to follow their passions, that cannot be the definition of sexism. Okay, so uh, I'm going to link to my other video too. You know, I had another video that looked at whether or not STEM fields were sexist and cognitive biases. Um, I'll link to that uh, because it's very similar. I, um, and I cite uh, Christina Hoff Summers and Jonathan Haidt in that, uh, in that video. Okay, so have a good uh, morning because it's morning or kind of late night. Uh, and I'll talk to you guys soon.